Hello. I'm so, so glad that works. <laughs> I was trying to get you on my um, laptop, but I'm on my phone and that works out great. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm really, really great. Thanks. I'm very excited to talk with you. We are huge fans of yours and really appreciate what you do every single day. So thank you. Oh gosh, the feeling is mutual. I'm a big fan of you and what you're doing for our community. Absolutely incredible. I'm so excited to get into it. I gave a little bit of a intro for you, but for anyone who's listening, maybe from your page, it doesn't know who I am. Hi, my name is Adria. I'm a speech language pathologist and dementia care educator here on Instagram, but let's get into it. <laughs> Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about what, what we have in common, which is the world of dementia? What is your connection with dementia and what is that meant for your life? It meant an abrupt jump off a cliff. It was a, it was a tremendous left turn as it is for so many people who are on this, sharing this moment with us and so many people who don't even know it's coming for them. Yeah. You know, the numbers are going in the wrong direction. It's every 67 seconds, there's somebody new. That's a lot of people having this stark reality. And it's like, they don't know what they don't know. I didn't, I bet you didn't either. No. And that's why I think what you're doing and, and what we're talking about is so important because once you know better, you can do better, but also you can kind of dig out from that sense of overwhelm and peek out from the fear and see that you can be resilient, you can be resourceful, you can get through it. Yeah, what incredible and encouraging words because it is true and it doesn't always feel that way, but it sounds like you know this personally, right? So you have a personal connection with dementia. My mother and my grandmother both died with the disease and I learned everything I know about caring, watching my mom care for her mother, my dear mm. grand. And I think we tend to see if it's our parent. And I know like with your grandmother, we tend to look at the strong figures in our lives and we think, well, that's not right. She's brilliant and she's optimistic and you know, she's energetic and she's got friends and she doesn't have all the things that people with dementia have. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that's such a naive and incorrect point of view, but it hurts so bad to watch someone we love disappear. So when my mother first started showing signs, our family, my dad, my older brother and younger sister and I, we tried to make excuses for it, even though we'd seen my granny go through it. And we said, well, she's just drinking too much. Her yeah. life, she's isolated and she doesn't have enough friends where she is right now. And we actually were planning to stage an intervention um, to send her to the Betty Ford Center. That's really what we thought we needed to do. Wow. And it became clear that she was, as I think happens a lot, she was self-medicating um, by trying to kind of escape her fear. Mm -hmm. But my mother, Adria, did the coolest thing. She knew what was happening with her. She could see the path through which, down which she was going to walk. So she gathered us all together and she said, look, I've paid the electric bill three times. Something's wrong. And she lined us all up and she said, here's what's likely happening to me. And here's wow. what I need from you. Wow. Well, wow. that was like a wow. First of all, it kept our family together because mm -hmm. she gave us assignments. You know, I don't mm -hmm. want to live with you. I don't want to live with your sister or your <laughs> brother. And um, you have to help daddy know when it's time to let me go. Wow. And it was the bravest, most courageous um, moment in our lives and allowed us to really, you know, look, we all dealt with it in our human ways. You know, I got over busy and I just wanted to do anything to keep busy enough to fix it or find somebody, talk to another person, learn something new. And I think my sister got depressed and my brother went into denial. We all went to our corners and licked mm -hmm. our wounds, mm -hmm. but we ultimately all came together and we were able to avoid that thing that happens so often, which is blaming and shaming each other for not showing up in the same way. Wow, what a gift your mom it, gave you. Because it, it did, it, it delegated and it took, it lifted a burden to some degree off of your shoulders and gave you a plan for the future that was, you know, separated from the, from a lot of 
questions. You had some answers like from the get go. We of what had a path. Would, yes. Yeah. What, what she wanted. You know, a lot of times when I interview people about someone with dementia in their life, often you're only given the opportunity to talk about your mom in the context of dementia. So I just wanted to take a second and ask you about your mom, who she was to her core. Without dementia, tell us a little bit about the woman that she was. A steel magnolia, strong Southern woman whose life I think felt bigger always than her environment. She came from a small town. She got married at 17. She and my dad were married 55 years. He emerged mm -hmm. as this remarkable caregiver, care partner for her, mm -hmm. which was so inspirational for us. But yeah. mom was silly and sassy and funny. <laughs> and um, she was a bit of a rule breaker and kind of a peacock. She wore bright colors and gold lame shoes. And she was... Um, not the kind of person to disappear from her life. Mm -hmm. So when it started happening, it was very hard for us, as it is for everyone who's listening right now, to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And I was in the middle of, so this was the 90s, before all social media and great resources were out there. Mm -hmm. I was in the middle of a very busy career with my three kids and, um, and I was hosting a talk show and I was producing and reporting and I loved everything about my life. When this came into our reality, I couldn't find joy in my every day. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew I had a calling to do something. I didn't know what my seat at the table would be or should be, mm -hmm. but I got very excited about, I'm gonna create in the world what we wish we'd had. You know, I want to create a place where people can be seen, where, where people understand what they're going through, where someone has stood, where, you know, where I'm standing now. And that ultimately became Lisa's Care Connection. And by the way, shout out to any of my team that may be joining us today. I've got the world's greatest team. They are such heart-centered, amazing people. You know some of I them. And do. Uh, so I just, I love you all, and I'm so proud to be in your company. I was going to say, I can attest to that because I've met with your team, and they are absolutely incredible. So they are. hello if you're watching. <laughs> I, I'm glad you brought up Lisa's Care Connection because that was going to be my next question because a lot of people are touched by dementia. They have someone in their life with a form of dementia, and even many people with a platform or with a personality and with maybe resources to do really good things, but not everyone chooses to. So what do you think it was that really em empowered you not only to just dream up this idea, but to put all the legwork and hard work into creating what's now Lisa's Care Connection? Thank you for that. I'm very proud of what we have done and it has been the biggest joy spot in my life. Honestly, it was my salvation. So selfishly, it it saved me. It gave me somewhere to put my energy and my grief and it kept me moving forward. But honestly, it was a promise that I made to my mother. Uh, she was in the early stages and I was just crestfallen. And I would sit with her and say, Mom, you know, we're going to figure it out. We're, we're going to get you in a research study. There's going to be protocols and there's, mm. there's things we can do. And by the way, there are lots of things to do. That's the other thing that I don't want us to forget. Mm. There are so many things to do to manage the behaviors, which you're so great at every day, but also to recognize that not everyone that's experiencing some form of dementia or they think it is, is going to go on to get full-blown Alzheimer's. Some cases can be reversed. Some cases don't have to progress. So there's lots of, I think, hopefulness on the scene. Mm -hmm. But my mother said, honey, in her beautiful Southern accent, mm -hmm. honey, you know, you've been a storyteller all your life. Mm -hmm. And she said, this is now your story. So oh, just, wow. just tell the story. And I didn't know what that meant, but I promised her that I would. And I said, I'm gonna make it count, mom. I'm gonna tell the story, I'm gonna make it count. So it's very easy for me uh, every day to recommit to that uh, because it, it, it's, it gave me a sanity sanctuary. And I think that part of what is difficult in this disease is people 
want to look at how someone else is showing up. It was right for me. Yeah. It wouldn't be right for somebody else. And I respect people that need to pull the covers up over their head and sit mm -hmm. with that sorrow and be in that grief. And you're going to have inertia. Um, but ultimately, this disease will not wait for you to be ready, will it? Mm. It won't. No. You've got to start somewhere. Yeah. For, for anyone watching or listening who might not know what Lisa's Care Connection is, can you kind of give like a broad overview of what it is? We connect people to each other and to the resources that they need on their journey. So our mission is to help caregivers, help families care for themselves and their diagnosed loved one, um, to create better outcomes through our connections and our resources. So. You know, we are physical locations on the West Coast and the East Coast, my hometown in South Carolina and the hometown where all my children were born in California. So those are our boots on the ground, bricks and mortar locations where we are high touch, big hug, uh, <laughs> coffee's always on, the door's always open kind of people. But uh, we have also created programs that stand alone where we can connect people to each other through our virtual connections, um, including our hugs program, which is probably the thing uh, about which we are most excited these days. Yeah, let's go ahead and go there. Let's talk about it. What is your hugs program? Awesome. Hug stands for helping you grow strong. So after all these years of working with communities of people that are loving that love someone with dementia we recognize that there's so much institutional knowledge out there people go through the journey however many years it takes um, and then if their loved one passes no one comes back to them to say oh my gosh you are the you have the phd degree in caring because of what you experience so i call them fctas former caregivers turned advocates yeah. and they have so much knowledge and so much information and so much street, so many street credentials. So Hugs is a peer-to-peer -peer mentor program where we connect people through our website online. You'll see the thumbnail images of who's there. And we can connect you um, through text, through phone calls, through emails, um, in person. Maybe it's one time you'll connect, maybe you'll become lifelong friends. You can do it anonymously, uh, and you just find the person that you need in that moment to get you through it. So we were so blessed um, to get a grant from Public Health AmeriCorps to develop this program, which we're now in the middle of doing. But we've had graduating classes of HUGS ambassadors on both coasts. And so these are teams of people who just live to say, how can I help? How can yeah. I help? So we put them through a class. We offer this curriculum where they learn to be more empathetic listeners. We capitalize on what they know through their experiences. We help them understand their personalities and how to use their communication skills to help someone else. And so there's a short virtual hybrid program, and then there's also a six-week program. So if anybody has experience, and I know a lot of you do, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, there's a mentee who needs you, and we would love to have you be part of our HUGS community. It's so much fun. When your team told me about that program, I was like, that's perfect. Like, that's exactly what's needed. Because, you know, also being a caregiver is hard, absolutely. But then once your loved one passes, it's not like all of a sudden things go back like they used to. No. Like, you are a different person. Your life is different and you have all of this experience and knowledge that you just feel like you need to have something to do with, you know, like, and that is an amazing platform and opportunity. And um, we'll put in the caption some resources for people to get connected with you because I love too that you're doing training. You're not just throwing people out there to the wolves. It's, <laughs> it's a really, really cool program. And I'm so excited to hear that you guys are putting this together at, and with such thoughts and intention. That's awesome. Thank you. And, um, you know, people, you can't walk this path alone. I think that's the fundamental reality. That's why you do what you do. That's what all of us have come to recognize that it's, 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 it's not a solo sport, right. but there are different iterations of what that means to get support. We know the statistics of what happens 
when you are supported in your care journey and when you're not. So we can, by our, our seat at the table was very simple, which is we know that better care for care givers creates better outcomes for care receivers. So for everyone, and that's all of us who've ever felt guilty or resentful, or um, I can't put, you know, how can I take my oxygen first when she needs me? All those things that we've all been there. Once you realize scientifically and statistically that what happens when you feed yourself, when you nourish yourself, that is the best way to love your loved ones. So the HUGS program is kind of perfect for that. And um, we've already seen great results from it. So thanks for helping us spread the love. Mm, absolutely. I love in the comments, I said, it's not a solo sport. Yeah, that is so true. I think, you know, I wanted to get your perspective about this. We talked a little bit about like the difference between having support and not having support as a caregiver. What do you think are some of the reasons why caregivers don't seek support? I imagine that there's a, a lot of different reasons that I've experienced and I've seen in talking to people. Um, but what have you noticed? I'll just speak from first my own experience mm -hmm. of why I didn't and um, and what we see from families because typically when they get in and they take that exhale and they're able to figuratively or literally hold hands with someone else, they wonder why they didn't do it before. But it, it, it makes sense. It's fear, it's, it's misplaced shame, it's this weirdly directed stigma that comes with this disease yeah. that is so wrong and yet so often there. Um, and it's, it's a, I think sometimes a misguided desire to protect a family and their privacy. Mm -hmm. And I do respect that. But, you know, my, my mother in our family, it was very clear what she wanted to do. And one of the first things she did was a public service announcement where she said, hi, I'm Jean Gibbons and I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> it's to this day, it, <laughs> it, it gives me chill pumps. And she was so, she felt so much better once she could name it and claim mm -hmm. it. And that's probably my best advice for people is just to get real yes. with yourself, with your family members, um, you know, have those uncomfortable conversations because that's where ultimately the transformation happens, I think. And I always, I think about this a lot. When I hear people, whether it's about dementia or another condition or situation they find themselves in life, when I see people in, person or on social media just kind of claim it like you know i've been struggling with this or like this is the reality of my situation i think we assume when when we're that person that people are gonna like be embarrassed like be sh like yeah. just be like oh like so weird why would they say that S but i respect people so much with that honesty and i think that that is is an important perspective to realize is that no, no one is is looking at you with pity necessarily. I think people can sometimes um, be afraid of that. That might happen, but I don't think anybody looks at someone and, and shames them for just being honest about their situation. Yeah. I also okay. think that a lot of times caregivers don't realize that they're caregivers sometimes, you yeah. know? Don't. Yeah. They don't. It's weird how Often we hear, well, I'm just the daughter or I'm only the mm -hmm. husband and mm -hmm. or I don't live in the same state. And yeah. all of those things are certainly not disqualifying. Mm -hmm. They are uniquely qualifying to put you in this position. We like to say that you can hold on to yourself even while you're letting go of someone you love. Mm -hmm. Certainly letting go of the person as you knew them, right? And you talk a lot, Adria, about people with Alzheimer's and other dementias only have this present moment. Mm -hmm. And it's been such a joyful lesson for me to be with families, including my mom and my grandmom, and see that no matter where I'm spinning about, I wish I'd done this and why didn't this happen and how come she's not that, or going to the future, staying in that moment of, of sometimes quiet solitude of just holding hands is really big communication. And look, I come, in a, I come from a profession where it's, you know, dead air is the enemy. You keep talking like you when you could, when I couldn't connect to your live, it was like, well, let me just keep talking. So that's the tendency for a lot of us is 
She can't say anything, I'll keep talking. But we're all responsible for the love we bring into a room, into a situation. And putting some lotion on someone's hands or brushing her hair mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. looking at the person uh, with that deep humanity, with no words, that's very powerful and I think makes people feel secure and gives us, the care partners, um, a real dance with our destiny. For, for all of us, that's the highest use of our humanity, I think. Yeah. yeah, I think in learning about those kinds of things from other caregivers is incredibly important. I, I am so honored to do what I do and create videos, but I'm the first person to tell you, I am not a primary caregiver. I am not someone who's ever lived with someone with dementia. I don't know what that is like. And so in especially the HUGS program through Lisa's Care Connection, the opportunity to talk to other people in your same stage of life, in your same situation, and hearing someone else who might have, you know, have a little bit of clarity of mind about some situations from someone that you know is living it too is so powerful. I think that's a huge need that caregivers have and maybe they don't even know it sometimes. Right. Sometimes they don't even know it. I always say there are two F words that are <laughs> useful in this journey. One is flexibility and the other is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that often comes from a sense of community and especially um, in the HUGS program because you can see um, how those things have been utilized uh, to, to keep you on path. You know, there are those days when you just feel like nothing's working and nobody else gets it. And, uh, you know, your loved one can't tell you, thank you, that mm. makes me feel better. Yeah. Um, you can't get that feedback that keeps us going as individuals, like, wow, I'm tired, but look how it's working. Mm -hmm. You may not see it working or what you may be doing may not, may not be working. And you may have to forgive yourself for going down that rabbit hole and yeah. get to something else. Yeah, they love that in the, uh, in the comments, flexibility and forgiveness. Those are two F words I will remember. And that's so <laughs> true. We need, I mean, dementia is a moving target. Like as soon as we feel like, okay, we've got things figured out, like we're in a good spot here, things shift and we've got new things to learn and to figure new out. Things. Yeah. I think for a lot of, you know, look, we know two thirds of the brains being diagnosed with Alzheimer's are female. And mm -hmm. we know that the vast majority of care partners are females. And I'll just say this um, from my own perspective of living life as a woman. Um, sometimes, you know, we like to, they, they, we, we, we stereotypically say that men like to fix it. Well, when you're um, a female caregiver, you want to nurture someone back to a better place, right? Mm -hmm. And you, yeah. you, want to, you just want to believe that I can reach them and that can happen. I think that for me, I had to remind myself to stop achieving and start receiving. Mm -hmm. I'm a gold star kind of girl, right? I want to know that what I'm doing is right and someone's saying, good for you, that's great, keep going. But that's not always possible. And the, mm -hmm. the, the key is to open up and receive receive help, receive support, receive forgiveness. We do something at Lisa's Care Connection called Breathe, Believe, Receive. And it's just little reminders, little mantras that help us reset. Um, and the receiving part, I think, is the biggest, most difficult place for people to be, to really, when, because when, you know, we, we instruct people how to answer that question, well, let me know if I can help. Well, that's a, that's a, big one right so it's not intuitive for people because they say oh no we're fine so yeah. it, it takes a while to start receiving and to give instruction on what you need to feel supported and loved in that moment yeah yeah when you're a caregiver receiving doesn't feel so natural sometimes right, right. that's right. a really good perspective well lisa i don't know how we have already almost hit 30 minutes. This is flying by. But if anyone is listening or watching and they want to learn more about how to get connected with Lisa's Care Connection and maybe participate um, in the being a mentor with the HUGS program or anything like that, what's your advice to them? I hope that if we can be of service, that is what we live for. Um, and you, you can find us and all of our resources at lisascareconnection.org. You can also find uh, a link to our HUGS site and our page there. You can sign up to be a mentor. You can request a mentor. Uh, you can take the short 
two-hour virtual class, or you can join us for our six-week kind of deeper analysis into what drives you as a care partner and how do you best communicate. And all, at the core of all of it is self-care. Mm -hmm. So the HUGS program is all about personal growth and self-care so that, it, you know, we can underscore that belief that better care for caregivers does translate to better outcomes for the care receivers in our lives. So it's the ultimate act of love. That's amazing. Well, thank you for everything you do, for pouring your heart into to Lisa's Care Connection, for being such a, a loud voice in this community. You are doing really great things. And I am so honored to know you to be able to talk to you Same. And this I really been so excited i get so much value and we are on fire sharing your tips and what about this one listen to this and we just um we just appreciate you so thanks for your smile and your optimism and your energy and for the opportunity um i appreciate everybody today so oh, love to see you lisa's care connection awesome yeah yeah, everybody check it out and I'll be posting about it in my stories after this so you can get direct links. But thank you again, Lisa. It was an honor and um, I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. I hope so. All right. Bye for now. Thanks, everybody. Thank